quick word on identity. Um, there are roughly, and I'm, I know I'm on, on record, so uh, anyone who's going to see this, please forgive me. There are roughly two ways of looking at uh, personal data. No. One is in terms of a philosophy of economics. Your data are your, as in my house, my data, my car, I own it, you can't use it, and unless you ask permission, etc. That, 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 all that line of thinking. And if you trespass, you're trespassing the boundaries of my property. Hmm? It's not accidental that no, it was developed here, it's 19th century, and it has that kind of a Newtonian economic John Locke kind of background in, 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 in its interpretation. Then there's another way of looking at personal information. And it's got to do not with the philosophy of economics, broadly understood, but with the philosophy of mind, or philosophy of personal identity. My data, or my memories, are more like my hand, my liver, my lungs, my heart. It's not that they are mine as I own them, are mine because they constitute me. This hand is not mine as in my car, but it's part of me. And if you take it away, you take part of me away. Remember, it's known uh, by making a, a copy of my data, I'm not taking away uh, those data. But there's something about cloning here and uh, being intrusive that's got nothing to do with trespassing, but more like kidnapping. Now, why the distinction here? Well, because if you have memories and if you acquire personal data in a public space, for example, how can you defend that in terms of, oh, that's trespassing? Well, no, you are on a square, gentlemen, so I'm not trespassing any space, or not metaphorically speaking, not even. And I can put all the CCT cameras I want all over the place, UK being the country with most of them installed all over the place. Forget about China. We are the real business here. Uh, we're controlling our citizens carefully. Trespassing and ownership doesn't really cut deeply enough. But kidnapping, well, kidnapping is, is illegal even in public spaces. Uh, and if you take away information from me, it's like you know, cloning myself. That's something that I find disturbing, disappointing. It might actually start constraining who I am, what I can do, who I can become. So that's why the right to be forgotten, and generally speaking, a philosophy of memory, is so important. It's about my data as in my body, and that makes a difference. Of course, it makes a difference in terms of forgiveness, because a lot of forgiveness is based on a management of memory. It's not based on, on forgetting, uh, necessarily, although that's much easier, uh, but it's you know, a careful management of what it means to have things left in the closet. And that's what I want to conclude with, uh, closure. When, uh, when it comes to uh, memories from the past, one way of understanding closure is remembering without recalling. If you had had a fight with a friend, if your spouse and you didn't quite get along last weekend, you don't want to forget, but you don't want to recall that event again and again, because that wouldn't be closure. Likewise, if you lost someone, that's not about forgetting that you lost that someone. On the contrary, you want to have that memory very green in your mind, but you don't want to have it made green again and again. Like a scar is there, and it's there forever, but you don't want to scratch it every time. The blood doesn't have to come out. So in this particular case, uh, when it comes to right to be forgotten, as a particular misnamed, and we all agreed on all sides that this was a bad uh, label, it stuck, so that's too late. But it's one of those things. It should have never been named in that particular way. Well, it is important because uh, when it comes to wider and bigger issues, when our governments that are asking for the linking, and they have been requests, well, one thing is the issue is, for example, peaceful cohabitation between different uh, ethnicities. One reason, and I know ethnicities, but different religion uh, orientations, one reason why we, it took so long to get some peaceful agreement in Northern Ireland was because generations were educated to never let go, constantly rehearsing, regurgitating all the harm, all the violence, all the nasty things that we have been doing to each other. 
that the Palestinian problem is always the problem that is the major obstacle before any peaceful talk. Sooner or later, after maybe millennia of you know, human terror and, and fight and pain, we will sit at that table. How fast you get to that table? Well, that's a matter of closure. And a matter of closure is a matter of philosophy or memory. So it is also a matter of rightly managing your past memories. It's not about forgetting, but it is about not recalling. And this is why we could conclude with a bit of biblical wisdom. It's hard not to find something wise in the Bible these days. So this is Isaiah, and uh, he's talking about the Exodus. And he says, talking to his friends, remember not the former things, nor consider the things of old. Now, why is this so crucial? And I can give you the Vulgata, which is actually a little bit better than the English. It says, ne memeniretis, which is not forget, but it's do not recall all the time. Now, the Exodus for Israel is not something that is supposed to be forgotten. Never. But it's something that you don't want to be stuck with when the new life, after so much pain, is in front of you. So this is a perfect example of precisely not the right to be forgotten, but the right to see memories sediment in a way that provide the ground for the future. So they do not become an impediment towards development, but they actually provide the roots for the flowers to come. And I hope this can open a Q&A for somebody. Thank you so much.